the theme came afterwards. Uh, the theme came from the style of, of music, but in the beginning, uh, everybody wanted to do the theme. You know, I, they were going out to, you know, David Crosby, and people were coming up with songs. I am thirty something, and I'm this, and I'm, you know, and and none of it worked. Uh, and, and even one of the writers on the show came over to Stewart's studio one day and was doing some Broadway song and, because he wanted that to be the theme. And at the last minute, they said, you guys have any ideas? And so we did a little sketch. There was a piece in the pilot called Begging for Sex. And it was a scene where after Michael and Hope had had, 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 a, had a baby and Michael was trying to kind of get her back in the mood and... Uh, and, and I called it begging for sex, and it was kind of based on. And it was kind of based on that kind of groove, and and I was it was just kind of an interplay with the uh, with the with the characters and the, and the humor of it, and that's because that had kind of fallen into the design of what we were doing for the show. And I had come up with a progression uh, that we had been playing around with, and Stuart had a sample of a Pepsi bottle. And so we did this little demo. Um, that's it. So that was, uh, we put this little demo together, and after they went through all the other demos, they said, well, it's just not working with lyrics, so we'll use this. But we didn't have time to do it, and we'd put mandolins on it, and there was no time. So they just sped it up <laughs> to make it fit the minute-long credits. So it was another one of those fluke things. We just happened to be playing around with something, and we submitted it, and it fit, and really had no idea that so many people would identify with it and that they would identify it with the show. And once again, it's just serendipitous, I think, for me. I, I was really in the right place at the right time with the right lack of chops. And, and it was just, it was time for something different. So speeding it up changed the key, I assume. Yeah, put it in E flat, <laughs> which baffled guitar players for a long time, I think. It was right when samplers were coming out and uh, Stuart just had this kind of bottle sound. And the way the, the way the title came up, we were just kind of playing, kind of like we did everything else. And uh, it, we tried it with piano, we tried it with a bunch of things. And, and the, whole, the whole underpinning of all this was acoustic guitar, mandolins, and things like that. So, so we needed something that would carry a melody. And he came up with that. Oh, that sounds good. You know, it was like a Coke bottle that was sampled. So we used it, and it was just a fluke. It wasn't. I wish I could say it was all thought out. No, no, it wasn't instant love. It was, it was one of many. It was one of many. But I think, I think what they realized over the course of they, because they were going to artists to write songs for their main title, and they were going to, you know, artists of our time, you know, like Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and uh, God, I can't remember who. I, three or four different kind of songwriters wrote songs for it. But I think. At the last minute, after they listened to all these songs and listened to a Broadway song and, and looked at the show, lyrics would have nailed it down. Lyrics about that pilot or about those first few episodes would have nailed it down to a certain thing. An instrumental piece that was in the fabric of the show left it open to grow and left it open for the show to go wherever it needed to go. Uh, you know. If you're singing about 30-something and all of a sudden we've been on the air 15 years, it doesn't apply anymore. And also it didn't, you know, we got into much darker material later on. And somehow that piece of material had some hope or a lightness or a, a resonance that still worked for the show even though we got into much darker material. So I think at the last minute they realized that they were, would tie their own hands and at least it was of the fabric of the show. Did they think it would, people would respond to it like they did? Probably not. Did I? No. Uh, I remember we got a, an Emmy nomination that year, and it was, a, uh, it was a, an area award 
where they, and I was so thrilled we got an Emmy nomination. It was an area award, and, and the way they did those is that they would, they could give one or two Emmys or they wouldn't give any. And I remember we went to the Emmy dinner and we were sitting there. At this point, Stuart and I already split up, and I was sitting across the room, and, and they came to our category and they skipped it. And what they'd done is they decided not to give it to anybody, but they never told us. <laughs> so we sat there this whole dinner and never even got told that we weren't even going to get our name announced. You know, it's so funny. But uh, I don't think that's one of the pieces that people have responded to, I think, in terms of my career, as much as almost anything else, that West Wing, a few things in particular.